All right, welcome. We hear some music in the background. My son is watching some Spider Man. It's a jam, like right now. So, we are going to be doing Invoke 4 today. Now, Invoke 4, that one was a long time coming. Um, we had a few problems with it. Um, Invoke 5 has actually been scrapped. So, if you see a video on that, that one's been scrapped. Um, Invoke 4, we had Invoke 4, which had a symbolic link. Every time you uploaded it, symbolic link would uh, break. We had Invoke 4.1, which every time you uploaded it, the firewall would turn back on. So now we're on Invoke 4. We're just leaving the firewall on. Just got to work around it. No, we have to work around it at all in Invoke 4, but that's okay. All right, so we're going to kind of use Active Directory against itself today. Um, as you can see, I just I just downloaded the box, just brought it up and running. So this is exactly what you're going to see when you actually very first start the box. You actually see it already logged in. Um, I wouldn't mess with it. That's just me. Just throw it out there. I would not touch it. Um, you will see it that it already logs in, but I would not sit there and play around with it, just so you know. You can try, but you are going to need that user's password, and you're not going to get too far with it. So, we go ahead and we, uh, start this guy up. We see quite a few ports are open, right? Um, so if I was looking at this, this is usually Amazon Web Services over here. If I was doing, like, a CTF, CTF, you know, like the ones that are just, like, everything's base 64 encoded, and... And different programming language stuff like that. I'd probably look at those. Since this isn't, uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna start off. We're gonna look at straight at port 80. Now, I always suggest do an LDAP domain dump. Try to get an SMB. Right. Look at the banner for SSH. See if you can do a um, uh, dig on 53. Right. On port 53 there. And yeah, let's go ahead and let's start off with just looking at port 80 there. All right. We'll go ahead. And we'll open up the web server here. This is gonna be a quicker video. Just a walkthrough of how to do it. Looking at port 80, right, we'll get this uh, page like right here, okay? So, once you scroll down, we see this nice little LinkedIn account down here. Let's go ahead and go to that LinkedIn. And we have, need help with your next assessment? Reach out to us below our, the emails of our security team. So, we have three different users, we believe, like right here. Let's go ahead and throw those users. Users.txt. All right, we'll echo, I believe it was hatter.wonderland into users.txt. And lastly, we'll echo that carrot.wonderland and we'll echo that into users.txt, right? All right. Um, now, you're not really going to find anything else on here. You can keep looking, looking, looking. You're not going to find anything else. Let's go ahead and do a get MP users. All right. Now, before we do this, we need to know what the my name is right we can get that really easy with crack map exec as you see i'm going to go after 192.168.0.37 i'll use user.txt you can throw whatever you want here in all honesty we can throw a bunch of crap in here we just do that okay and then give it a word list all right so obviously that doesn't work or you can even just give it a password but what we do see is this invoke.local so it reached out and realized that's invoke.local so that's the domain name all right so we have that now so if smb isn't up and if you can't talk, look at uh, um, or if SMB is up, but you can't look at it, and if RDP isn't up, you can get it this way also. So, invoke.local, no password, do a user's file, set it to user.txt, which we just made, right? And then domain control IP address of 192.168.0.37. Now, let's go ahead and see if any of these accounts are curve roastable. And there is one, and it's Alice, right? That might give you deja vu from invoke 1 or 2, I forget which one I did that on. But it might give a little deja vu there. So let's go ahead and echo. That into a cur.txt. Now I'll use John on cur.txt. Word list will equal user share word list rocky.txt. Fork equals four. And let's see if we get anything back with this. And we do. All right, awesome. Let's go ahead and grab that password right there. I did pick, pick a password way down the word list for Rocky.txt just so uh, brute forcing it would be hours upon hours or even days. All right, so let's go ahead and do a... Um, we can try to SSH in. You're not going to get very far with Alice SSH in. So let's go ahead and do an SMB server or an SMB client. Attack L. And we do have 192.168.0.37 with the user alice.wonderland. And we can go ahead and throw in that password. 
and we see that we have a share, and that's different. Uh, usually there's admin, C, IPC, and sysvol, net logon. Those are all normal. Share is not. So let's go ahead and look at share. We'll delete that tag L. Throw in our password again. Do a directory, and we see this reminder.pdf. Okay, let's go ahead and get that. We'll exit out of here, and we can go ahead and do a um, Firefox reminder.pdf. And we'll see that it needs a password, okay? So let's go, go ahead and do a PDF to John for reminder.pdf. And we'll go ahead and we'll throw that into hash.txt. John, hash.txt, word list of user share word list rocky.txt, fork equals four. All this is going to do like right here, if we look at that hash.txt, it's going to put that PDF file into something that John can read. So if we do a cat hash.txt, it's just something that John can read for the password to be able to try to pull that password out of it. Oh, let me go ahead and do a tax show because I've already obviously done this before. And we see that it is this password like right here. All right. So now we have that password. Let's go ahead and throw that into here. Or if we just refresh it, we can. And we get this reminder. I'll be looking at the share for any help desk concerns slash computer problems. And Arrow CMS is now complete. Please register and log on. Log in at your convenience. So we know that there's an Arrow CMS on here, and we also know that the um, someone is going to be looking at the share, most likely an IT personnel, since it says help desk concerns slash computer problems. So what we could do from here is make a evil.url. Now, if you don't know how to make that, I'm actually going to be fixing this script here in like a little bit, but what you can do is go to overgrown care one GitHub. And I didn't make a script. The, uh, it does work for this, but it's not, it doesn't work how I want it to work like right now. All right, so I'm just going to kind of mess with that like a little bit. Invoke everything, and we are going to go to smbkiller.sh. You go ahead and download that. So that smbkiller, let's go ahead and remove tech RF this at evil. If we do a bash tools smbkiller, right, we need our L host. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and grab our L host like real quick, which is going to be 192.168.0.29. And we need a interface for responder. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and do either that zero. All right. So it says upload at evil uh, dot URL to remote share. We'll do. Let's go ahead and log back in there. So that remote share there. I'm going to grab her password again. And we'll go ahead and we'll put at evil dot URL in there. Let's go ahead and uh, put in Cali up here. And now we wait. Which we should be waiting this long, but I think what the problem may be is that it already gathered this hash. It already did that one. So let's do an SMB server. Which should gather it again. You can see it is on the machine, so I'm not really understanding exactly what happened here. Yep, that looks correct, like right there. It's also on the machine over here. That's very, very strange. Well, since we do have the machine, we can always restart it. Because that's very, very strange, like right there. Because it did just work about 10 minutes ago. Let's give it a time to restart.
Also, more because if it's, if it's because I already made at evil, so it's like, nah, dude, I ain't gonna run that again. Maybe you need to call something else. And there we go. Alright, so you shouldn't have to technically restart the machine. I'm wondering if it's because I've already done this once before. And we just deleted at evil the last time, and I never actually shut the machine off. I'm wondering if it has to do something with that. Um, no, I did very, very first start, right? I shut the machine off. That's weird. Shouldn't have to do that. Uh, I didn't have to do it the first time I did this, so that's really weird. So let's go ahead and echo that into hash.txt. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a john hash.txt hash .txt show again. Oh, saying that I had to crack that password. Okay, that's weird. And we get this password like right here. Now, once we get this password like right here, now we can actually do something. First off, you'll see that arrow is not on port 80 at all. So what we can do is we can get in the machine now. So let's SSH into it. We are going to also need to do that, so we'll leave that there for now. So let's go ahead and SSH into it now. Yes, SMB's messing up over here. Well, that's because I just restarted, though. So we'll SSH into um, carrot on uh, 37, right? Put in that uh, password. Go to PowerShell. Make it look a little bit easier here. All right, let's go ahead and CD, or let's go ahead and do a netstat, attack A and L. Stop that. Scroll all the way up. We'll see that there is a 8080 here that is listening, right? Okay, so it is listening here, uh, waiting for a connection. So let's go ahead and let's make a connection to there. Um, we can go ahead and we can port forward that now with Alice.Wonderland or with Carrot.Wonderland, either one. We can do Carrot.Wonderland. So that's his stuff's already right here. So we're going to forward that off. So now we're port 40. So let's go ahead and check out that 127. 001-8080. Alright, we see an XAMP. Let's try PHP Miami and see if we actually get in there or not. Because that would be sweet if we could. We can because we're port forwarding it. So you can actually do a lot more to this than what was originally said. So it said that arrow was on there, right? So let's go ahead and do a Rust or a Firox buster on this guy. We'll stop that. Oh, no. Nope. Stopped a little bit too quickly. Alright, now we can stop that. Scroll up and we see all these arrows like right here. Arrow, arrow, right? So there's definitely something called arrow here. Let's go ahead and check out that arrow. If we scroll all the way down, we'll see admin user. I deleted the default admin user and made myself an admin. If anybody needs an account, see me. Okay, so let's go ahead and carrot that wonderland and put in that same IP address that or that same uh, password that we had. We'll go ahead and we'll try to log into that. And as you see, we do log in. So one way to be able to get this, obviously you can get through PHP by admin also if you want to. But we can go ahead and add a user now. Uh, or we can change a user, whatever you want to do. Test, test, test. We'll say test, test. And then we'll browse for a picture. And we're going to use a Windows reverse shell. Now remember, on that Windows reverse shell, we do need to change our IP address at the bottom, which mine's already changed. So this Windows reverse shell, like right here, if we look that up, was made by Ivan, and you want to look up the Ivan one. Alright, he's got a PHP reverse shell, and we're going to try to run that now. So we're going to run that Ivan one, like right there. So let's go ahead and um, get back over here into my arrow. Run that Ivan one. Now, I do say that I want to listen on port 445. So, let's go ahead and netcat LVMP 445. That's already in use because I'm using it up here. So, we can just try to netcat LVMP 445 up here. Get rid of this down here. Get rid of this down here. Make my life a little bit better. All right. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to browse. We're going to add that user. And we may get a callback immediately. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you have to actually go review all users. All right, and we do get a callback. Who am I? And I am NT Authority System. All right, so that's how that machine works like right there. I hope you all enjoyed it. Hope you all liked it. And yeah, that's going to be about it for this one right here. So you all have a good one, and I will talk to everyone later.